We've all been to a restaurant, a arcade, or a sports bar and seen this. A mini basketball arcade game. The hoop is always too small, it's never regulation, the balls bounce out and you're trying to get them back in order to keep shooting, one will hit you in the head or something like that. That can be a lot of fun. You wouldn't think a silly little arcade game could change someone's life. But it did, and I'm going to tell you how. Here's what happened. Years ago, I was part of this organization called the Permanent Charity Society. It was a charitable organization comprised of performers and executives in the entertainment industry, and it engaged in all kinds of charitable activities. I, for example, was an ambassador for a litter-free America. Now, what does that mean? It means that, look, everyone can't solve poverty, everyone can't solve world hunger, everyone can't end war, but everyone can pick up some garbage and put it in the garbage can. That was my gig. I was asked on behalf of the Permanent Charity Society to participate in an event that would require we all meet at Henry Winkler's house on a Saturday morning. Yes, that Henry Winkler. The Fonz Henry Winkler. Hey. So when I arrive at Henry's house, it's like a red carpet event absent the red carpet, any pomp and circumstance, media, arrogance, ego, or attitude. It was fabulous. There were these huge stars there and for some reason they let me in too. We got inside, everyone was having a little breakfast and coffee when an announcement was made and they explained that we were all going to travel via bus to a place called the McLaren Center. We were told that the McLaren Center was a safe house and all of the children that were there were guardians of the state. They were being protected from an environment where they were verbally, physically, sometimes sexually abused. We were also given strict instructions that while we were there not to bring cameras or phones or anything like that. There would be staff on, on hand and if someone wanted a picture, the kids could ask us for a picture but don't ask them. But if they wanted a picture with us, there would be a Polaroid camera where they could take a picture. When we arrived at the McLaren Center, it was fabulous. They had, you know, games set up, there was food, there was music, there were all kinds of activities going on. It was a really festive environment and there were a lot of celebrities there. And I was just a, a young actor and, okay, I, I was a bit of a fan myself. So I, I saw like Joe Azuzu. If you don't know who Joe Azuzu is, click the link below and you'll find some of the Azuzu commercials, which were great old school commercials. So I took a picture with Joe Azuzu. I also saw Ned Beatty. Yes, Deliverance, Ned Beatty. Yes, Superman, Ned Beatty. Like character actor extraordinaire, Ned Beatty. Like an actor's actor. I got a Polaroid with him too. I got a Polaroid with Steven Seagal too. And this was like the above the law, Steven Seagal, like when he was hot and I can't find it. It's, it's around somewhere. I assure you, as soon as I finish making this video, I'm gonna find a picture of me and Steven Seagal. A lot was going on and at one point I found my way to the mini basketball machine. While playing, suddenly this young man comes up to me and says, do you wanna play? Sure, let's play. We hit start, he beat me. You know, everybody gets lucky once in a while. Let's play again. He beat me again. This time, like right out of Princess Bride, like. And Nigo Montoya, who's dueling with the Dread Pirate Roberts, I start smiling. And he's like, what's so funny? I said, because I know something that you do not know. I'm actually not right-handed. I'm left-handed. So now I'm going to shoot with my left hand, and I'm going to beat you now. He said, shoot with whatever hand you want. You're not going to win. Oh, yeah. He was a little trash talker. I said, all right, young man. You think you're so big and bad? I'm going to bet you, and if I win, you have to get me a plate of food whenever I want it. You have to get lunch for me for the rest of the day. But if you win, I'll get you a pair of Air Jordans. Suddenly, I had his attention. We get ready to play again, and literally, I was playing right-handed, and I switched to shoot left-handed because I'm left-handed. He beat me again. Okay, 
I've had enough basketball. You got you got Jordans coming. Let's get out of here. For the rest of the afternoon, he and I hung out and had a great time. Because he was a really sweet kid. And, you know, whatever. We listened to the music, played other games. That's it. We just hung out all day. We connected. Later on that afternoon, they announced it was time for all of the guests to return to the bus and we were going to head home. That's when it hit him. I was going home and he was staying there at the McLaren Hall. As I was leaving, I told him, don't worry, I'm going to get you those Jordans. And he was like, okay, all right. He just had the look on his face of a kid who had been disappointed. That Monday, I called my Nike rep, Tracy Hardy Gray. I think Kadeem and I are probably, if not the first, certainly we were of the first celebrity clients for Nike. And, and, and you can tell by all of the Nike gear we wore on a different world and in life for years. I called Tracy and I told her the story of what happened at the McLaren Hall. Without hesitation, Tracy said, I got you. What was really cool is this is when Nike was launching the Jumpman brand, Michael's own division at Nike. And Tracy sent me not one, but two of the brand new Air Jordan Jumpmans in the young man's side. It was so cool because if Tracy couldn't do it, I was going to call Michael. I've been friends with Michael for a long time. I have never asked Michael for anything in my life. But I was going to call Michael Jeffrey Jordan and tell him, I just need two pair of Jordans for this kid. But it worked out. But this is why Nike is so great. I didn't have to bother Michael. Tracy was like, I got it. I called back to the McLaren Hall and gave them warning that I was coming back to deliver the Jordans. When I got back, a young man met me with one of his friends and I handed him the two Jumpman Air Jordans. I let him know with his buddy there, these are Jumpmans nobody can get, not even in the stores. You have them and I don't even have a pair. He was thrilled. You could see it on his face. He was kind of cool, but you could see it on his face. He was really happy. And why not? You know, brand new pair, I'm sorry, two new pair of shoes, they still make me happy. So yeah, I got it. It's really cool. But that's not the end of the story. About 10 years later, at least, at least 10 years later, I get a message on MySpace. Yes, that MySpace. The MySpace that just got hacked. The MySpace that most people didn't even know still existed. The MySpace where I had an account but couldn't get into my account because all of the stuff was going on. And when I got in my account, it had been erased. None of the friends I was connected to were still there. All of the messages were gone. Yeah, that MySpace. When I finally got back into my MySpace account since all of the messages had been erased, I'm going to have to paraphrase the message I got, but it went something like this. Dear Mr. Bell, my name is Carlos Moore, and you might not remember me, but years ago, I was a resident at the McLaren Hall for Boys and Girls, and you and I played a game of basketball, and you lost a bet, and you promised you'd give me a new pair of Air Jordans. Well, you got me two pair of Air Jordans. And you taught me a vital lesson, that a man always keeps his word. It's a lesson that stuck with me for life. Now, I'm one of the fastest men on the planet. I'm training for the US Nationals and the Olympic Games, and every day, I live my life by the principle you taught me from that day, that a man always honors his word. It's still one of the coolest things that ever happened to me. <laughs> I've had people impact my life in a positive way and say things to me like Father Giles Hayes at Del Barton was, said something to me when I was a sophomore in high school and it resonates with me today. And he just said it in passing. He just kind of, just something really encouraging and thoughtful. And it's lasted a lifetime. For me to learn that I'd had some sort of impact on this young man's life and that he had found 
through everything that he was dealing with for whatever reason he was at the McLaren Hall to not let that limit his aspirations, his ambitions, his capacity to achieve and succeed. It was just, it was an extraordinarily satisfying message. That's why I've always been mindful of what I say to young people. It's what I say to anyone because you never know the little things you say can make such a huge difference. Because who would have thought a simple game of mini basketball would leave an imprint on a young man's life forever? So cool. That's it for this week. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button. That's the one with my initials in it, my little moniker. Uh, leave a comment, uh, like, and hit the like button, uh, share it with your friends. I'm close to that 100th subscriber. That's a big milestone for any YouTube channel. And for my 100th subscriber, I have something special in store. There's a pun there, but that'll make sense probably if not next week, certainly in the weeks to come. Soon, it'll make sense. But until then, uh, thank you again for watching. I appreciate all of you. And until next Thursday, that's what happened.